Okay, it's uh, 8 o'clock now, so I think uh, we'll start. Okay, uh, today we'll discuss about this uh, probate and administration. Uh, first thing first, uh, as you all know, this is just one part of your professional practice paper and uh, and it, it only consists of uh, one question, uh, you see. So, by strategies, I think my personal opinion is as such, you should not spend too much energy and efforts in this particular area of law. Instead, uh, what I would recommend you all to do is to get your ethics and advocacy and land very strong and solid. Okay, This is just like a backup question when you are having difficulty to answer the land question. Okay, and uh, one more thing is uh, because PP is a little bit different from um, your civil paper, criminal paper, it has consists of uh, five questions that you need to answer, you know. So maximum time allocated for each question should be only around 35 minutes. Huh? Just make sure that you don't go beyond and too much, you know. Okay. All right. So what is your general approach in uh, dealing with probate question? Okay, uh, this is the approach that I have adopted in my previous revision. I hope it is a benefit feature for you guys as well. Okay, first thing first, huh? Okay, there are still many students joining. Okay, first thing first. You must first uh, determine the value of the estate of the deceased. See how much the assets worth, okay? This will subsequently help you to decide where is the proper jurisdiction that the, the administrator or the executor should go and apply their LA or probate, you know, okay? So, and subsequently, number two, you must determine whether the person actually died with testacy, that means with a, uh, a valid will or in testacy, okay? And there are distinctions. Uh, I mean, this uh, becoming quite popular question in which they ask about uh, administration of estate among the Muslim. Okay, so the only differences here would be the application of Sijil Farai lah, okay, for Muslim. And the governing statutes, okay, you will be provided with no statute at all, but it is expected for you to have a gross understanding about this uh, PAA, the Probate and Administration Act, as well as your SEDA, okay, and Distribution Act, and this is your Amana Raya Berhad things, the PTCA, and also rules of court in pertaining to your, what we call the citation and also the contentious or non-contentious uh, uh, probate action, okay? Uh, statute will not be provided, huh? so you have to memorize, okay? Okay, this is the current law uh, that... Uh, uh, govern the administration of estate in Malaysia. Okay, like I have said, uh, okay, first thing, okay, you have to see whether the person died with will or not. Okay, if it dies with will, more than 2 million ringgit, uh, definitely we should go to high court, okay, high court for grant of probate. And if it's uh, less than 2 million, uh, but the person died with will, okay? Then the proper forum that the executor should go will still be high court, huh? okay? Please remember that. And this is provided under your section 5, sub rule 1 of your SEDA, okay? Very important, huh? please get this uh, thing very clear first. In the event the person died without a will, okay, if it's it just consists of uh, movable property, for example. Okay, no immovable property. Lah. That means no landed, no land, no bungalow, no house, no shop lot at all. Okay, if it is less than 600,000 ringgit, and the proper place that first the, 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 the waris uh, should go will be 
ARB, the Amana Raya Berhad. Okay, this is the section I think you should be familiarized with. Uh, section 17, PTCA. Okay, so, so if, uh, let's say, the assets come in a combination of movable and immovable property. Uh, if it is less than 2 million ringgit, then the proper place that the waris should go will be your land office, huh? Pajamat Tana dan Galian. Okay, I give you an example here. For example, okay, now the total value of the estate, huh? the total value of the estate consists of uh, one house which is valued at 300,000 ringgit and on top of that, the the uh, I mean the person who had passed away left another one hundred thousand cash in the bank. So total value three hundred thousand house plus one hundred thousand cash in the bank. So which one the should we go? Eh? any idea at this moment of time? I think I I, I assume that you, you guys are well versed with that already. Any idea? 300,000 house plus 100,000 cash. Where should we go? Any response? Pejabat Tana and Galian. Okay, correct. Okay, very important. Huh? Uh, don't get confused with the 600,000 uh, uh, value for this Amana Raya, you know. Amana Raya only for immovable property. If there is, uh, I mean, the estate itself consists of uh, uh, immovable property, the right forum uh, that in your mind should, should straight away go to the Pajabat Tana uh, land office, huh? Okay, get that in mind. Uh. Less than 2 million, everything will go to Pejabat Tana dan Galian. Okay, if it is more than 2 million, uh, okay, uh, the proper forum will be High Court. That is, uh, I think you all know already. Okay, so the procedure to apply a grant of probate, grant of probate only occur when the person die with a will, okay, with a valid will. Very important, eh? So the necessary documents that you must uh, prepare beforehand would be the original death cert, original will, and who are going to apply? Uh, the executor or executors. Okay, will can only consist of one executor or executrix, huh? remember? Okay, and then you have to provide the list of assets and liability in a, in a piece of paper. Lah, okay, so next step, as a lawyer, what you should do is, okay, you must launch a search uh, in the Bahagian Surat Kuasa uh, with the Registrar of High Court to search for any pre-existing probate, uh, okay, uh, so to prevent overlap, okay. And uh, like I said to you, it is actually the executors that must apply for the grant of probate with original summon plus affidavit, eh? okay? This is also pursuant to your Section 3 of Probate and Administration Act and also Order 71, Sub Rule uh, 5, okay? Rule 5, lah. Rule 5 of Rules of Court, okay? And then uh, you must give an appointment of a solicitor as well. You cannot just go uh, in your own uh, personal capacity. Okay, you need to appoint a lawyer for this grant of probate application in high court. Okay, and subsequently you you get a hearing date usually by the registrar, and whereby the executors need to be present as well as your I mean the client the beneficiaries uh, mainly. But sometimes the executor and beneficiary can be the same person also, and also. Uh, you must provide the original will for the inspection of the registrar. This is under your Order 71, Rules uh, 47A, okay? And the registrar will give you an order in terms, lah, and subsequently you can extract the grant of probate. Okay, after the extraction of grant of probate, we have finished the dealing with the court. It is for the duty. I mean, the executor or the executrix should 
in good faith and honestly uh, manage, administer as well as to distribute the estate of the uh, deceased. Okay, so please get to know that. Huh? Okay, not very hard. Huh? So this is one example of the course paper that uh, is available in my, uh, 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 my master's firm. So usually the executor will be applied by originating summon plus affidavit, okay, plus affidavit, okay. And then subsequently, uh, the death cert has to be provided, okay. Like I said to you before, this is the list of your assets and liability. Very important, you know, um, because eventually the executor cannot just uh, distribute the assets without addressing the issue of liability. This will be highly uh, prejudicial to the creditors, correct? So uh, usually the court will evaluate and order the executor to settle the debt first, settle the liability. Subsequently, only you can distribute the set. Eh? Okay, very important. Eh? Okay. And this is a sample of, uh, this is not original, of course. This is the sample of the view that is made by uh, um, this one, um, a disease. Lah, okay, unfortunately, she passed away. So usually the, the will will be made in written form. Okay, uh, and then uh, the usually it will contain the clause that a new will will subsequently revoke any previous will and to describe what are the assets that the disease has. I mean the the will maker has okay and how it is to be disposed okay how much to the husband how much like fifty percent to the husband fifty percent to the children so uh, you can give to anyone you know I mean for example if you are making the will for yourself you can give your assets to anyone you like you do not need to have any blood relationship you do not need uh, he or she to be your spouse. You don't need any relationship also. You can put it, you want to donate to one charity also can. So as your wish. So this is the benefits of making a will. Okay. Without a will, everything that owned by the deceased shall be distributed under your distribution act. So these are the major differences. So looking at Back at this view, uh, it must be signed, okay, by the uh, view maker, okay, usually by signing, okay. But uh, section 5, sub rule 2 of your view act said also, if uh, the view maker cannot sign, actually the sign can be replaced by any other person in his presence. But in real life, I have yet seen to be happened in my personal uh, case, lah. Okay, usually the person cannot sign, we will give a thumbprint. Okay, subsequently, huh, you must have two individual witnesses who are achieving the age of majority. Okay, so this is how the view is being made. Okay, original view you tender for uh, grant of probate. Okay, so this is uh, the special clause for those who cannot understand English. So you must you must uh, avoid further problems uh, to, to make sure that, uh, you know, there's no fraud, la, there's no uh, some suspicious circumstances because the will maker may not understand English, isn't so, or Basa Malaysia. Okay, sometimes we have to put this, uh, 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 this clause saying that the will had been well explained and signed, uh, pro provided the will maker totally understood what he's giving uh, to the beneficiaries, okay? And uh, subsequently, you need to find in the uh, witness. That means you have two witnesses for this view, isn't it? So you have to find, find in the uh, affidavit of the witness. Okay, for example, this view is, uh, is attested by Fiona and Christy. So you have to find their uh, witness affidavit, okay? to say that I memang witnessed the view. Okay. 
So this is how is it about. And then the executors, uh, the executor role is very important because eventually the grant of probate will be granted to him, you know. So he will have the full power to dispose, manage, and also to administer the uh, estates of the disease. So he must angkat sumpah also, you know, uh, to declare that he will honestly, bona fidelity, distribute, settle the debt first, settle the debt, and subsequently distribute the assets accordingly. So this is the one that he has to sumpah, lah, okay, the executor of the will. As well as this one, you it's a repetition, lah. it's the scenario asset and also liability, right? And you have to give what and who are the beneficiaries under this bill, okay? So very important also. Hmm. This is for the, uh, okay, I could not extract the grant of probate uh, from the e-filing system. So I have downloaded this from internet. This is the example of grant of probate. So we are clear, huh? this is how it is being applied. OS plus epidemic plus supportive documents eh, by the executor or executrix, okay? So in the event that you have will, eh, okay, but the executor refused to, to apply, okay? Because I, I told you before, in order for you to get grant of probate, no other person can, can go and apply except the executor or the executrix that is being named inside the will. He only he or she only can apply the grant of probate. In the event, for example, the executor or executrix was not mentioned inside the will. The will was drafted uh, okay, by referring to internet rather than uh, by a professional uh, lawyer or the rock will, you know, Sadiran Bahad things. Okay. So sometimes it does not contain the particulars of executor or executrix but you have a valid view you know everything is valid except the cross for executor is not mentioned so what do you do you apply the uh, letter of administration plus view annex okay this uh, condition is very unique in the sense that in general if we go by letter of administration all the the state or the assets belong to the deceased shall be distributed based on your section 6 of distribution act okay if you you have a valid will but you do not do not have an executor or the executor is i, I mean uh, had died before before the disease or refused to extract the grant or probate so this is the event uh, whereby you can apply la plus will annex and then the uh, distribution order, uh, you must remember, uh, okay, distribution order shall be based on the will. So these are the distinction between the normal LA and also LA with will annex. Okay, so, uh, okay, I will talk about normally apply LA uh, plus will annex or without will annex is the same. Okay, it's the same. But I think I make uh, this, uh, what we call uh this one there's no will okay there's no will here eh? okay so the necessary documents is always the death cert plus the whoever that wanted to become administrator usually the administrators are they are the beneficiaries or those who claim interest in the estate they are the one that will apply therefore i say they are actually beneficiaries of the estate of the disease, okay? So as usual, this is the standard um, uh, procedure. You must search for any uh, other grants from uh, Bagian Surat Kuasa Mati first, and then these are the person that can apply for grant of probate, okay? If there's no nexus uh, between the, I mean the disease, and also, for example, I don't know you, uh, and then suddenly, uh, Unfortunately, touch wood, you pass away. Oh, suddenly, I go and apply for grant of probate, uh, a grant of LA in court. I'm not allowed. Eh? So under section 30, I'm not allowed. Those who have interest in the estate can only apply for 
grant of LA. And then the High Court will grants administration to those person that it thinks fit. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, difference with uh, grant of probate here, okay, in the event that letter of administration is being applied, you need to execute this administration bond, you know. This administration bond is by virtue of section 35, your probate and administration act, in which you need to get two shirties. Okay, that two shirties, uh, okay, I take for, for one exam example, uh, now, for example, unfortunately, due to some illness, for, for example, I passed away. And then I left the assets of uh, 2 million ringgit. So the two shirties uh, is not simply any other person, you know. That two shirties uh, must have uh, the assets in Malaysia that equivalent to this 2 million ringgit. Only the court will grant, uh, I mean, administration bond to them, you know. So they are the guarantors, okay? But of course, the administration bond can be dispensed with if uh, sufficient reason is being caused now because it's not easy to get uh, outsider to act as guarantor, okay? To act as shorties just for the purpose of administration of state, okay? You must bear in mind. Eh? And... Uh, subsequently, after the hearing and everything, the court will grant letter of administration. And then, since there is no will, the court will actually order this, I mean, uh, give a distribution order based on the section 6 of Distribution Act 1958. That means, see, lah, whether the spouse is living or not, the children are there or not, whether the parents are there or not. So, like that. They, they distribute according to the relevant percentage. Okay, this one I'll discuss in the question later. Lah. Okay, so get the general ideas uh, sound and solid first before we proceed. Eh? Okay, so this is the OS that being applied eh? okay, by the administrator. Eh? And I love to repeat myself, administrator are those who hold interest in the estate of the deceased, not any other person. Eh? Okay. So subsequently, there will be uh, what we call an uh, supportive uh, affidavit. And also you have to claim uh, how many uh, by your personal uh, knowledge uh, because the affidavit, the deponents must have personal knowledge, isn't so? So who are the worries? Who are the, the, the spouse, the children of the disease, so and so? And who are you okay, to apply for this uh, administrator? And then again, this is similar to the role of executor here because administrator, you also manage, distribute, and also administer the estate of the disease. So very important role. You must angkat sumpa, okay, to declare that you you will act bona fide, okay. So after that, uh, I think this is almost the same lah. You must list down the assets and liability, clear the debts first, only distribute the assets. Huh? this is general rules here. And like I said to you, Section 35 eh, of your Probate and Administration Act warrants for the application of letter of administration, whether with will annexed or not, you need to execute this administration bond. And administration bond will be guaranteed by two charities with equivalent amount of assets in Malaysia jurisdiction. That means those who pass away with 2 million assets, you must find two uh, equally rich punya shorties lah, okay, to cover this. Lah. So in the event that you cannot get those shorties, what you do, you file in a notice of application to plead to the court that I have tried my best, but I could not get this can you just have leniency on that? Usually the court will grant, okay. Usually the court will grant, and uh, you must find a notice of application by uh, affidavit in support to claim what is your reason. So, uh, the reasoning here is like this, okay. I have tried my best, okay. You see, I'm only young, the weekend, I do not have any other friends uh, who have such. Uh, monetary, I mean, uh, uh, 
uh, such value of assets that equivalent to the state of the disease. Okay, so these are the reasoning that you 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 give to the court lah. Okay, remember this section uh, section thirty five sub rule two, uh, probate act, uh, probate administration uh, act nineteen fifty nine. This is how you dispense the administration bond. Okay, otherwise there will be no grant of uh, uh, LA. You know. Okay. So after that, the court will say, okay, I uh, after I have listened to you and uh, I will grant the administration bond to be uh, forfeited, no need administration bond. Okay, because court usually will look at the situation and decide. Lah. Otherwise, uh, it's not fair for the, for the family of the deceased as well because they lost a family member, for example. At the same time, the whole assets, huh, the estate is being frozen, you know. Okay, not fair. So the grants of letter of uh, administration is this one as similar sample here. Okay. Ah, okay. So and um, okay. We only uh, what we call we only need uh, uh, for example the administration of movable part, partly or wholly uh, movable or immovable asset that is less than two million. Uh, usually uh, Nowadays, they can apply online. So, uh, the role of uh, lawyers is not compulsory here, right? Okay. Uh, actually, I don't think this is the area that they are going to test you. Lah. But if you are interested, then you can read this flowchart that I have downloaded from uh, this Pujabat Tana Dan Galian here. And usually, first step, uh, okay, they will receive your online application and then subsequently they'll do valuation okay valuation is based on the total value of the assets okay uh, they will have one uh, Jabatan penilaian and also Rimatan Hata. they have professional valuers if memang your assets worth less than two million okay and they'll proceed if it is more than two million it's out Okay, they'll refer to high court. Lah, okay, and they'll call for hearing and then they'll, uh, they will, in, during the hearing itself, uh, the beneficiaries, I mean the family members, lah, okay, will attend and then subsequently, it depends, okay, whether the, the land office will decide to distribute the assets based on uh, your distribution plan, or there's a consensus between the family members. Usually, uh, the way of practice is we encourage, because this is anyhow a family issue, do not make it like quarter, isn't it? So if there is a consensus, they will sign and, okay, I agree to take 30%, okay? Uh, so and so 50%, another one 20%, something like that, consensus, huh? And they will give the distribution order. If you are not happy, then you can go to high court for an appeal. Eh? Okay, this is... Uh, but I think for the sake of exam, uh, you only need to know the jurisdiction of land office less than 2 million. Okay, mm, but must have uh, uh, what we call immovable and also movable, uh, what we call the uh, property. Okay, if the asset uh, or the estate value is less than 600,000. Eh? Okay, 600,000 of solely movable property. That means cash, la, watches, jewelries, etc. Okay, Amala Raya can dispose by themselves. Okay, this is pursuant to your section 17 PTCA. Okay, the rest, if you are interested, then you can read. If it is not, no need. Okay. Okay, so what are the area of focus I think uh, you should concentrate in would be how to challenge a view. No? For example, how do you go to question a validity of the view? Um, this will include your issues of testamentary capacity, okay, suspicious circumstances, any fraud or forgery involved, or even undue influence. Undue influence I have not seen, uh, but in reality, God, uh, okay. As well as the issue of citation, that means the executor or the administrator, they are delaying. I don't know why. Even the with the grant of obey and also the grant of letter of administration, they don't want to go. 
to administer the estate. Okay, they just hang there. Firstly, you know why? Okay, so you can call them to give reason in the court. Eh? And caveat also, caveat is to stop the grant of representation in the court. If you feel like you want to challenge the view, lah, this is the first step that you should do. And resealing of grant means, uh, uh, take for example, if the deceased actually owned properties in Malaysia, but somehow he died in one of the Commonwealth countries, take for example, Singapore. Okay, so the death cert was issued in Singapore and the disease also has assets, a lot of assets, more than Malaysia probably. Okay, he extract the grant of probate or LA in Singapore. So the question is whether this, you need to do it over again in Malaysia or not. The, the answer is definitely no, because Malaysia recognized the grant of representation from Commonwealth country. All you need to do is by this procedure, we call it resealing of grant, okay? So mutual will also one of the popular question in which uh, usually among the spouse, uh, they'll set up an identical uh, will, same uh, or almost the same, the subject matter almost the same, uh, okay? Okay, if I die first, I give all my assets to three children of mine, for example. If you die, okay, you also must give to three children. So something like that. So, and this view usually is by mutual uh, promise between the spouse. And uh, one of the cardinal feature of this mutual view would be it is irrevocable. That means uh, cannot revoke. Okay. Then only it becomes a mutual view. All right. Okay, we go to, uh, I hope you have the question with you. Eh? We go to this uh, uh, 2018 uh, main paper. Okay, question number nine. Okay, uh, Joseph was a successful businessman with a happy family, wife, Rita, and three children. Okay, he had also made a will securing the distribution of his properties to Rita and the three children in the event of his passing. So you can see here, there is uh, one view already. Okay, and in the first view itself, he agreed to distribute the properties to Rita and children, eh? three children. Eh? Okay, but however, some uh, something had happened. In the year 2009, Rita suffered a heart attack and died. Okay, so the, the first spouse had died. So the following year, Joseph married Joy, a divorcee with two teenage children okay, of her own and set up another home, leaving his three children, now all of age and headed by Robert the eldest to manage their own life. So the story until now is very clear. Joseph made one view, okay, actually for the first family that he had built with Rita, but Rita, Rita died and he remarried, okay, with Joy, plus another two teenage children, uh, whom I believe that now becomes uh, uh, Joseph's step, uh, ch ch step children, uh, okay. So what happened? Two years later, Joseph was hospitalized after suffering a liver, liver failure. So within three months, uh, Joseph died. Open his death, Joy filed a petition for probate of Joseph's will, which will was dated just one month before the date of his death, leaving his lifelong assets to Joy as beneficiary. Okay, now you can see, uh, okay, Joy, the new spouse of Joseph, filed a will. Okay, so the information of the new will is already contained there. Okay, so the will was properly prepared in English. No issue with the English because it's allowed. But Joseph's signature appeared uneven and not formulated as was his usual hand signature. So the pre, I, I mean the first family, punya son lah, the elder son, Robert, had his father's usual signature in a number of documents and especially in the will he created during Rita's lifetime. So the question was drafted in the way that they remind you again, actually Joyce tenders the second will, you know, that was actually the first will here, huh? okay? 
And Robert, on his behalf of his brother beneficiaries under the first view, is challenging the validity of the view produced by Joy, remembering that his father was in hospital on the date of second view. So Robert had consulted you to represent him and his brother at the hearing of petition. So advise Robert. So how do we go about that? So this question, if it comes up in exam, my advice, please do. Please do. It's not very hard. Okay. So this is the outline of the answer that uh, I have formulated myself. So usually if I'm blurred, this is the... The, I mean, the usual way that I'll put myself in, I will copy down the question in advising Robert. Reference is made to views uh, and then I should have put the uh, uh, abbreviation and also your P-A-A-R-O-C. So this is how I'll start my sentence, okay? So in order to advise uh, Robert, I will first ask him to launch a caveat, okay? So how to launch a caveat, uh, you have to memorize, okay? Uh, by feeding a caveat form in form 164 to give to the principal for that registry. So when a caveat is entered, the registrar shall forward a caveat and give notice in form 158 to the registrar of the principal registry. So all this, unfortunately, you are not being provided with statute or your ROC you need to memorize. This is pursuant to your Order 71, Rule 37, okay? And the duration of the caveat will last six months. Also, pursuant to your Order 71, Rule 37, Sub Rule 5, okay? So, pursuant to <laughs> Section 33, since Robert has dispute over the view, he may enter a caveat before representation has been granted eh, to the estate. So um, the representation, once he enter a caveat, the representation or the grant of probate should only be grant provided Robert is given sufficient notice. Okay, this is the gist here. And subsequently, what is going to happen is Joy will need to serve uh, a warning. Okay, for example, because Joy will want to uh, get the grant of probate so that she can get the benefits from the estate, correct? But now, uh, uh, whatever her application was being caveat, you know, being blocked by Robert already. So what Joy need to do will be serve a warning. We call it warning. Uh, okay, to show to Robert, actually, uh, I'm the right fool. Uh, executrix for this will and this will is valid and I'm entitled to all the benefits in the new will, okay? So this is pursuant to your Order 72, Rule 37, sub Rule 8. And subsequently, uh, it is for the caveater, Robert, to enter appearance within eight days. So it's quite complicated, you know. You have to memorize the rulings, eh? okay? Eight days is the uh, appearance. So Robert, who caveat the grant of representation, must enter appearance, okay? So open entry of uh, entry of caveat aforesaid, the probate matter shall, converted, shall be converted into a contentious action, okay? Uh, why I said so? Initially, join line. No issue. If everything goes through, she should be okay. She apply with uh, OS plus affidavit plus all these supportive documents. But now somebody come and challenge, hey, you cannot take the view lah, because of the following reasons. Then the whole thing become a contentious probate action. It becomes dispute, okay? So the grounds that could be relied by Robert would be, okay? So you have to mention whatever in the facts law, no? okay? So second marriage and also uh, assistance of first view. This is my way to draft the answer, la, okay? You can draft uh, the answer in your own uh, favorable way. It's still okay. So I will say that section 12 of your will act, actually, uh, Joseph new marriage with Joy will revoke the first view because the reason why I want to put it is because it's 20 marks and open-ended some more. And 
as I said to you before, the examiners already remind us the will that initially uh, Joseph made when he was together with uh, what we call Rita, isn't it? So I put to dismiss it. So I said, new marriage with joy will automatically reward the first will. And in furtherance, the new will, this is by practice, uh, is likely to contain the revocation clause. Okay, So like I've shown you in our firm's, uh, the will made by our clients, you can see that as well. You know? So this is section 14 of your will act. Okay, So likely that the first will made by Robert and his brothers to be the beneficiaries will not be admitted. The court will not accept. Lah. The first view is already gone, lah, being revoked. So this is why I put my explanation here. Okay, And uh, second thing, suspicious circumstances around the making of will. Uh, why I said so is the facts provided that the will was made one month before the death of Joseph. So this raised uh, an index of suspicion. And very surprisingly, you see, uh, Joseph has got two families, isn't it? Uh, the first family, Rita, died, but still got three children headed by Robert. The second family is not only John, you know, but another two step children. But why the will was drafted in the way only give to John? Eh? See you know. So this is the second ground of suspicion here. I will say, I will put myself. Okay. The will had wholly gifted joint who prepared or was closely involved in the preparation of the will. Uh, so I assume, uh, this one I assume, joint will be the only caretaker that near to Joseph at the last journey of his life. Okay, Because apparently uh, Joseph was sick, isn't it, with liver failure. And then um, subsequently he died. So this one, I have to make this uh, assumption to establish the suspicious stuff, okay? circumstances. And it is suspected Joseph did not obtain any independent legal advice at the time of making will as well. Okay, So in order to dispel all these sus suspicious circumstances, you have to determine who bears the burden because Robert wanted to challenge. So does... Robert actually the one that bear the legal burden to prove suspicious circumstances. Actually, no. Uh, it is for the joint who wish the will to be valid. I mean, he, she is the propounder of the will. Lah. She must bear the legal burden to dispel the aforesaid suspicious circumstances. You must put it in your examination eh, because uh, in, per, uh, in relation to the issues of suspicious circumstances and also your testamentary capacity. Eh? It is not the plaintiff or the what we call the person that challenged the will, lah, but the propounder of the will that bears the legal burden. Okay, You can use one case here, the Toyupiao case, okay, to support whatever you said. Okay. And uh, forgery of uh, Joseph's signature. Okay, Because just now, the text told us that uh, the, the, the signature was uneven and not formulated as was his usual signature, isn't it? So you can conclude by saying uh, it could be forged, okay? It could be forged by virtue of your section 5 of A, in which every will okay, I have shown you must be signed at the end note. Nah? I mean, at, at, at the last, uh, uh, at the end of the will, I mean, at the bottom, at the bottom of the view must be signed by the uh, view maker. Eh? Very important. Eh? Okay. So to allege for forgery, eh, the legal burden is actually on Roberts, you know, okay, to prove it on balance of probability. This one also another point that you must not miss. So, how does he prove the I think the forgery? The facts provide you. Robert may actually tender Joseph's sample of signatures in a number of documents. This one I copy directly. Lah. And especially in the will he created during Rita's lifetime for the court to compare. Okay, this is comparison method. Okay. Otherwise, Robert could also call a handwriting expert. Okay, handwriting expert. And um 
Lack of testamentary capacity is also a, a ground here because Section 3 of your will act provided that the will must be made by Joseph when he was sound of mind. Okay, that means he know. What does it mean by sound of mind? Eh? It doesn't mean that he's conscious, you know. He just need to have a very minimal threshold of soundness of mind. And he knew how much properties or assets he owned and then he know whom are the person that the assets uh, will go to, okay? So this is the soundness of mind here, okay? And here, uh, Joy will bear the legal burden of proof to show the content of will was read and the testator understand the content, effect and extent of the disposal of the property. So that I say, uh, they know how much they own and who to give, okay? As simple as that, huh? And you can rely on the case of Udam Singh against uh, Inda Court. Okay, so uh, you must further submit it, you know, because the fact told you that uh, Joseph was ill and he was suffering from liver, liver disease, isn't it? So you submit mere bodily ill huh, or imperfect memory is insufficient to prove testamentary incapacity. Uh, you can re rely on the case on uh, Li Ying Ching against Gan Yok Chin. So, testamentary capacity, the threshold is very, very low. Okay, remember this. Lah. Okay, so you put a submission here. Despite that Joseph was terminally ill at the time of making of the will, however, it may not be a vitiating factor on his testamentary capacity. Okay, as simple as that. And furthermore, uh, you must put a conclusion because since you said that the testamentary capacity is out, the first will is out, is being, being revoked by second marriage and also new will. So how do you challenge a will? You base on these two grounds, okay? The successful, the success rate is higher, okay? Suspicious circumstances that we have mentioned and also Forgery basis, lah. this is how you go to submit your conclusion. Make it sweet and clear. No need to drag too much to talk about the subs uh, substance uh, of the facts or the law. Okay, Because 35 minutes pass very fast. Ah. Remember that. Ah. Okay. So second question, uh, supplementary uh, question of year 2018. Okay. I'll read the question first. John, a Malaysian, now living in Australia. Huh? If you look at the word Australia, probably the first thing that you should do is think about the receding of your grand. Lah. Okay. So what he has is, he has a landed property in Ipoh Pera left by his deceased father. He is the only beneficiary, but is unable to return to Malaysia to claim the property. His father's property in Australia has already been transferred to him pursuant to probate of will left by his father. So, in a coma, granted by Australian court. So, he already got the grant of probate in Australia court. So, how to get Malaysia punya property? That will be the question. So, what I'll do is Okay, I will answer your question at the end of uh, the what we call the, the slides. Huh? It will be easier for us to, to do so. Okay, so I will put myself in such a way huh? by virtue of section 6 of your SETA as well as your section 52 PAA because we do not know the value of the landed property. That's why you submit it. So if less than uh, 2 million, SETA. Okay, if it is more than 2 million, high court. Okay, so the probate granted in Australia could actually receive in High Court of Malaya. Eh? So therefore, John is advised to receive the grant in High Court in Malaysia. Since he cannot present in Malaysia, what he need to do is he must give power of attorney to the lawyer. That means he must sign up. Okay, I hereby confer you the power to do it on my behalf, to receive the grant on my behalf. So this one also you must remember order 71 rule 25 and also section 28 of your uh, PAA 
Okay, mere regurgitation of what you know without citing the right provisions might be detrimental to your answer, you know. So you have no choice but to cite, uh, to, to cite down the exact provision, okay. This is by pure memorization. Eh? So before the receiving, the lawyer shall give security by bond, okay, in prescribed form. This is like your administration bond, lah. Okay, so this is pursuant to your section 55 PAA. And then subsequently, the notice of seeding the of grant shall be sent by the registrar to the court which issued the grant, section 57 PAA. So after receiving the grant, uh, the lawyer can transfer the property first to his name uh, and must obtain order of the court to sell the property because like I said, land is very unique on his own. No land in this world uh, is exactly identical to others, you know. So a lot of, uh, uh, how to say it, a lot of uh, requirements have been set by the court to prevent transfer. Think of that way. So this is pursuant to your section 60 PAA. Uh, the proceeds from the sale shall subsequently remit to John's bank account. So this is how you answer. La. Okay. So this is for the first part of your answer. Receiving of grant. Okay. So second question will be, Mary, the sole survivor in the family, has the grant of letters of administration of her late father in which her brother, Ken, had been appointed administrator. However, Ken has migrated to Canada, leaving the father's estate still not sorted out. That means, huh, even though Ken had angkat sumpa, okay, I wanted to be the administrator of uh, my brother, lah, I mean the late father of Mary, but subsequently he did not perform his duty. So what do we do with Ken? Okay, because we want to advise Mary, isn't it, who is the beneficiary. Okay, so. I'll submit in such. So on the fact Ken had migrated to Canada, he could not have said to execute or perform his duties after the grant of LA. So what Mary can do uh, is actually to issue a citation, okay, for Ken to show cause on why you are, I mean, why you refuse to perform, uh, why there's a delay, why you go to Canada first before you... Uh, distribute or dispose the assets that belong to my late father, for example. So this is the citation that you can uh, make this can to show cost uh, to the court. So this is pursuant to your section 40 of your PAA. And the procedure is codified in Order 71, Rule 41, Rules of Court. And the citation must be in Form 160. Seven supported by an affidavit sworn by Mary, and then the citation notice must be served to Ken personally. But in the event that Ken was in Canada, uh, it can be replaced by substituted service. Now, okay, substituted service means possible to uh, put in the newspaper, okay, or Propose a way, la. email him, WhatsApp him, whatsoever, whatsoever, just propose a substituted service to the court. Okay, if the court is satisfied with this sort of method, and then the court will grant you the order for SS. Okay, if Ken fail to enter appearance, uh, Mary may apply to registrar for an order to grant the, instead of uh, grant to this uh, uh, administrator to can might as well as I execute myself because I want to get the money or the assets fast. So this is pursuant to your order 71, rule 42, sub rule 5, sub rule A. Okay. And in alternate, in alternate, okay, actually Mary can do another two things, you know. Okay, in the event where LA has been granted, Ken had not performed his duties accordingly. Uh, actually, Mary could also commence an administration action, you know. So this is what I have learned during my pupilage. This is my older AD uh, Rule 1 ROC against Ken in High Court. 
So after commencing this administration uh, action, uh, the court will actually call Ken to come and compel him, you know, to administer the estate by court order. So this is by virtue of Order 80, Rule 3, sub Rule C. Okay. And the case here you can refer is Tan Sri Dato Sheikh Kajik. Okay. Uh, this is how la, you can plead in alternative. And another uh, resolution uh, that, uh, I mean, solution that Mary could invoke uh, actually uh, is uh, Section 34 PAA. That is to remove Ken as the administrator by showing sufficient cause in High Court. Okay, you can use the case of uh, Ku Bong Gong. If you do not have time, personally, I think citation will be sufficient for the case here, okay? But these are the possible ways that you can do la, uh, in practice, all right? And question C. Che Jia has properties left by her late husband. She has been advised to apply for the grant of letter of administration of estate. She is worried that she go to civil court or Sharia court. This question also is getting its popularity. So how to answer this question? Uh, you use the landmark case of Latifa Binti Matsin against Rosmawati. Okay, this case is very important huh? because it, it went to federal court, you know, and uh, the reason is because whether Sharia court or civil court has um, jurisdiction to administer uh, the, the what we call uh, the, the estate of the Muslim. Okay, eventually this is the decision made by the uh, court in which uh, I'll put my my answer in this manner. I want to relate to question. I cannot just cite whatever the federal court decision, isn't it? I have to relate to the check ja. So check ja is required to first obtain a seizure farai from Sharia court, which states who are the beneficiaries and their respective share in accordance to this uh, Islamic law. And uh, if the estate uh, total value of the estates uh, is uh, less than 600,000, actually Jack Jia can go ARB for distribution. So because the question itself, you it must be a little bit creative. Uh, don't just go to civil court uh, because you have to see whether the, the value of the asset reach the threshold or not. Uh, okay? If the estate uh, consists of wholly or partly immovable property less than 2 mil, and uh, Jack Jia needs to make application in land office, okay, for distribution order. And the distribution order uh, in Muslim case will be based on seizure farai, okay. If it is more than 2 million, Jack Jia needs to make another application in civil high court for a vesting order, okay. That means to get grant of your LA from a court. And the court huh, will make after everything, uh, it's, it's the same, you know, actually it's the same, but only thing is the seizure farad requirement is required for Muslim only. And the orders will not be made according to your distribution act, but will be according to your seizure farai. Okay, seizure farai. Hmm. Okay, nothing much here. Okay, we go to 2019 uh, main paper. Okay. Pandu and Waliyama died in a motor vehicle accident where the car they were traveling were rammed from behind by a lorry tanker. So it was an unfortunate accident. So during their lifetime, Pandu ran a banana leaf restaurant and Waliyama had a handicraft store. So they had six children, Arvin, Bala, Chinia, Dash, Swaran, who are all adults with the youngest Mugu being 30 years old. Okay, all adults already, lah, meaning. Hmm. So Chinia and Mugu are the best of brothers as they have permanent jobs and do not depend on their parents for sustenance, but were very close to their parents. Okay, so what happened next? Arvin, Bala, Das, and Ashwaran are unsure whether either of their parents had ever written a will. So whether will they are will or not, we do know. Although they have heard from the uncle that 
their father had consulted a famous and resourceful lawyer, Siwa Ji. Okay, some months before the tragic accident, and that Siwa Ji is very close to Chinya and Mogu, they have heard that Chinya and Mogu may take or be bequeathed with the lion's share of their parents' estate with the assistance of Siwa Ji. So they were told that they could employ the process of a caveat and citation to stop the said brothers from any improper dealing with the estate of the parents. So we have to advise Alvin, Bala, Dash and Eswaran because they suspect there's some form of collusion between Chinia, Mogu and Sivaji, the lawyer. Eh? So we have to answer the question one by one here. Number A, explain what is caveat and its purpose and its utility in the administration of the estate of a deceased person. So pretty simple. So because I don't want to keep on repeating myself, with Alvin, Bala, Das, and Eswaran. And if you are blank, uh, and if you are thinking of what to do with the answer, it's better for you to label the, the parties, uh, okay? As the brothers, uh, easy, okay? So I will put myself first sentence collectively refer to as brothers. So subsequently, I will keep on mentioning the brothers, uh, re represent them, okay? So I will put uh, section 33, so, uh, I mean, 33 PAA provides that brothers as any person having or claiming to have any interest, okay, may at any time after that, the death of their parents, Pandu and Waliyama, and before the representation, that means LA not granted yet, lah, okay, or probate lah, if Sivaji did make the, what we call a, a, a will for Pandu and Waliyama, Okay, enter a general caveat in the prescribed form. This just now I, we have, I have mentioned already. Uh, and no representation shall be granted without the notice to the brothers. So this is how a caveat works. Okay, uh, it's only stopping them okay, to, to assess to the grant of representation. Okay, to stop Chinese and Mongu. So, caveat is actually a notice to the officers of the court requiring them not to let anything to be done with the deceased person's estate. Because once the grant of LA had been released, uh, extracted, then the administrator will have its right, you know. You cannot say that he abused his power, no. The administrator will act based on the grant of LA, you know. That time is too late, now. Uh. So this is pursuant to your order 71, rule 37, sub rule 7. Actually, uh, I'm very honestly tell you, uh, even until now, I could not memorize the sub rules. Uh. I don't know how you, 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 you memorize during the examination. So uh, uh, yeah, for me, I prefer to, to use uh, insolvency and winding up. Uh, uh, because it's very hard for me to memorize all this form precisely during examination, okay. But anyway, just try your best here. So the said caveat is to stop all proceedings for the purpose of obtaining a grant of probate or LA in respect of the property of the disease without first giving notice to the brothers. For this instance, uh, you may submit as such. It may stop Chinia and Mongu from taking or bequeathing the lion's share from their parents' asset with the assistance of lawyer Siva G. Okay, so this is how I'll put my answer. Okay, so second question, discuss the process and procedure for the removal of caveat. Uh, so caveat is really an important question, popular question, I think you need to know, okay? Uh, so how to remove, okay? Remove, mm. caveat. Uh. So after the caveat entered by the brothers, to enter the caveat is very simple. You just need to show that you are a person of interest, and then you have to fill in the form 164 pursuant to your order 71, rule 37, sub rule 3. And then the court will also notify Chinia and Mongu, and Chinia and Mongu need to show they have contrary interest by issue a so called warning form, okay, in form 165. This is pursuant to your order 71, rule 37, sub rule. Eight, okay, and uh, 
Uh, this uh, form itself will state the interests of Chinya and Mogu and subsequently also requires the brothers who are the caveator now to give particulars of any contrary interest. A little bit similar to the caveat in the National Land Code. Lah. Okay, the caveator must show, must show the caveatable interest as a trunk, isn't it? So a little bit similar. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the warning uh, or a copy of it must be served to the brothers, okay, and also the registrar, lah, okay. And the brothers uh, must within eight days enter appearance. This is in form 166 to the said warning. If they default, okay, if they default, what happened, okay, they can either choose to withdraw their caveat by giving the notice to the registrar. Okay, order 71, sub rule 37, sub rule 9, or pursuant to order 71, rule 37, sub rule 12, Chinia and Mongu may find the registry and affidavit showing that the warning was already served. Okay, and then uh, the brothers did not respond. So it can be automatically removed. Okay, and Chinia. Uh, and Mongu subsequently can proceed accordingly lah, to get the grant of representation. So grant of representation is common term, lah, whether you get LA or uh, probate. Okay. Mm. And uh, what if the brothers uh, actually enter the appearance? Lah? I mean, if they did not enter the appearance, things will be much easier for Chinia and Mongu, isn't it? But if they enter the appearance, lah, the court will see whether they have contrary interests or not. It's just like the land, lah, whether you have caveatable interests or not. So um, if they are con contrary interests, it means what? So the caveator is actually contesting the validity of the will, you know, or any interest in intestacy. So in this issue, the whole non-contentious probate action will convert into contentious uh, probate action okay so this further you have to use order 71 rule 37 sub rule 10 said that the caveter with contrary interest to the caveat uh, to that of the cavity may within eight days okay the warning okay, being served to him enter appearance okay uh, so once the appearance is entered the matter shall be deemed to be contested lah, like I said lah, okay uh, becomes a contentious or bad action. Eh? If there is no contrary interest, you have to refer to your order 71, rule 37, sub rule 11. Okay. And um, if the capital, uh, I mean, uh, the capital with no contrary interest, okay, but wish to show cause against the making of the grant, okay, to Mongu and Chinia. Okay, he must uh, serve a summons for direction. Okay, serve a summons for direction. That means, uh, okay, I have no contrary interest, but I demand further actions from the court. So usually the court will go for full trial, you know, full trial to hear the matters. Okay, that means to it becomes a contentious probate action. Lah. Like you have, uh, becomes a read action. Lah, and then subsequently you find your SOC, SOD, hearing, tender evidence, all that. Okay, it becomes a full trial. Okay, so this is how. And uh, question C is what? Uh? Okay, explain the meaning, purpose, and types of citation. I think this question is relatively easy about citation. So citations uh, is a notice of the proceeding where executor or the administrator refuse or delay in performance the duties so okay uh, so as simple as that it's just a legal notice lah, to the executor or administrator so there are actually three types of citations okay whether the executor or the administrator to accept or refuse a grant of probate okay this is pursuant to your order 71 rule 42 sub rule 1 or to take probate or to propound a will okay if an have an issue with will, like the issue of uh, testamentary capacity with the sub, uh, suspicious circumstances, then you can go under this action, okay? 
uh, I mean a citation okay, to propound or view. Ask the executor to come uh, to the court to give reason. And usually uh, if the citation is signed uh, for the executor or administrator to propound a view, then the whole proceeding again will turn into a contentious probate action. Okay, it will be a lot of hassles. Huh? So at material time, uh, because the brothers were advised whether they can go for caveat or citation, isn't it? So we will go for caveat for, for sure. Lah, okay, the brothers were advised that there was no need for the brother to issue citation because the purpose is different. We do not know whether there's a grant or probate to Mogu or Chinia yet. We are not told whether they are delayed or refuse to execute the duty. So no need, no need. So you submit such, okay? At the same time, you answer the question. Okay. What is the time now? Right, okay. So we have a, a supplementary paper of uh, year 2019. So Ahmad, successful internet entrepreneur who had a pen, pension for selling and buying shares and stock died intestate eh, without a will okay leaving behind a wife maria two sons and one adopted daughter so maria had consulted baker an old acquaintance eh, who is studying for his uh, clp on the administration of amas estate so baker gave some opinions since the parties are Muslim, then Maria should apply for the letter of administration either in land office or Sharia court. As the process in the civil court is not applicable and cannot be resorted to. So is it correct? Ah? Obviously, it's no, isn't it? Okay. So Becker also advised that as regards to the distribution, it is preferable, uh, preferable that the process in civil court will be utilized as very likely the Sharia court will not allow the estate to be distributed to the adopted daughter. This one I checked, uh, memang is true. Sijil Farai cannot distribute it to adopted daughter. And Maria has, has roughly estimated that her husband's estate made of uh, entirely shares and stock with no real property, you know. So this is the tricky part. So no immovable property. Uh, so what is the total value here? The total value is 10 million. But at the same time, the examiner is trying to confuse students by saying his liability will be around 9 million. Okay. So the question is how to calculate the total value. Do we take into the accounts of the liability. Okay, I'll answer your uh, this question shortly. Very recently, Maria had met up with Deng and shared with Deng her predicament uh, on the process of resolving her husband's estate and advice given by Becker. So Deng became furious, uh, very angry with what the COP student said, uh, Becker, and told Maria that all Becker's advice are wrong on all counts. Okay, so Deng stated that the administration of Amas estate can be carried out through SEDA, the small estate administration process. And of course, because Maria had receiving two types of uh, opinion, okay, she became confused and seek for your expert opinion. So how do you actually advise Maria on obtaining representation on the husband's estate and on distribution. So this question, a little bit challenging. Okay, so to advise Maria, several issues need to be addressed. Huh? I prefer to use heading. Huh? I don't know why. Uh, to, to me, using heading can make yourself more systematic and the examiners also will not get sick of reading just a paragraph, you know. So I'll put in testices estate value as the first push. I mean, first starting point of my answer. So I'll put this way. Ahmad had died in estate without a will. The total value of the estate involving movable properties, because they said Ma bought a lot of stocks, shares, and no real property in his hand, amount to 10 million. So I will use section 3 sub rule 4 Seda 1955, I will say that the computation of the total value of the estate could not consider Ahmad's liability. 
Okay, so that 9 million uh, actually cannot be considered. So the total value of the estate is actually 10 million. So 10 million automatically go to I thought. Okay, please be clear. Otherwise, you get the whole question wrong. You go to Seda, like uh, who's, who suggested? Deng suggested. Because Deng must be, you, you see, 10, 10 million minus 9 million. Uh, and then get the calculation of 1 million. 1 million said that, so then is correct, lah, correct or not? Uh, but in reality, it's wrong. Eh? So I will further submit that since it is 10 million, it exceeds the jurisdiction of land office. So 2 million pursuant to your section 3, sub 2. And also, can, you can put another section, section 4, said that, and also ARB, the Amana Raya, also cannot, section 17. Okay, because it tells you movable property, no? Okay, so I make sure that I let the examiners know I know where to go, which jurisdiction, and the reason why. Okay, I put it in a very short sentence. Okay, and therefore, Maria must apply for grant of letter of administration because first sentence here, the will, the will eh, in test state. So, run off letter of administration from civil high court instead of land office or Sharia court. So, submit. Both Becker and Deng were mistaken in providing the information. So, here what you do, you backstep, lah. you backstep Becker and Deng. Okay. Uh, in reality, you cannot do so. Eh? Okay. Is uh, not very professional. So, Muslim estate issue. So, as the disease Ahmad was a Muslim, Maria must uh, obtain sigil farai from Sharia court before applying LA in civil court. So, as we have discussed, this is uh, relying to the case of Atifa binti Mazin against Rosmawati. Okay, please me remember one case here. Eh? Okay. The civil high court will refer to Sijil Farai in order to determine the distribution of the estate based on Islamic laws, okay? in which the adopted daughter who is not blood tied to Ahmad was not entitled to inheritance. So one point Becker made was correct. Adopted daughter, if it goes to the Sharia court, they will not get. Eh? They will not get. Okay? the uh, estate. So the procedure must be taken by Maria, general procedure only, to apply the grant of LA. So uh, first you put it down, like I said to you, Maria as the person interested in the estate can only apply. This is by section 30 PAA. So how she apply, I have shown you OS plus affidavit. Okay. And uh, High Court will grant administration uh, to, uh, to whom it thinks fit lah, as uh, administrator or administratrix. And uh, simultaneously, uh, Maria must apply for Sharia Court for Sijil Farai. Okay, this one I again confirm with my, my colleagues and seniors as well. Some court, before you apply, you must give to the court. I mean, the Civil High Court uh, must have the Sijil Farai first. Okay? Some can do it later on, but still must have, still must have. This is compulsory. Eh? Okay. And the civil high court may require the administration of bone. This is normal, eh, standard. This is pursuant to your section 35 PAA. And to that, the every documentation hearing is complete. Okay. LA will be granted. Okay. Finally, the court shall issue distribution order for the properties. Okay. For the properties. This is, I must correct, uh, make correction because only movable properties that I uh, must have. Uh, and the distribution order shall be based on the uh, seizure farai uh, allocation, not based on your distribution act. Okay, this is Muslim punya S. Okay, eh? hmm. uh, main paper 2020. Okay, we will look at uh, what is the question about. So, Puan Tima's husband, Uma, died after suffering from cancer in 2019. He left behind two wives, Puan Tima and Puan Ayu, and four children. 
So Uma is believed to have died in the stack. Okay, no view again. Leaving a piece of land. Okay, you can see uh, there's a land here in Ulu Sintok Kada worth 700,000. So automatically either Seda or High Court. Confirm, eh? Okay. And somehow not finished, eh? This uh, uh, Uma still got other properties. A Ford Ranger vehicle worth about 65,000 ringgit. Savings at Tabung Haji, 25,000. And some investment in uh, SND of nothing more than 100,000. So he had previously drafted deep of gift for each of the wives where Puan Tima was to receive a bungalow now value at 1 million ringgit. Whereas Puan Ayu was to get a townhouse estimated to have a market value of 650,000. So the transfer of the properties, however, have not been completed. Okay, that means to say the deed of gift, gift uh, uh, the deed of gift had not been executed. Lah. And then Uma had died. Okay. So Puan Ayu being the second wife asserts that she has priority in making the application for a letter of administration and wants to apply for an administration of Uma's estate. He had been advised by a neighbor who worked as a litigation secretary in legal firm that an application for a letter of administration can be made to high court only. Okay, you can see uh, again, repeat, repeat. Uh, whether need Sharia court punya sijil farak, not. Okay, so Pantima, on the other hand, had been advised that Uma's estate can be considered as a small estate, okay, very similar to the previous question. Eh? And there is a simplified procedure without involving the court. That means to go to the land office and distribute all the assets according, accordingly, if the assets value is less than 2 million. Lah. Okay. And Puan Tima has also been advised that before a letter of administration is issued, some kind of sureties must be provided and the person standing as surety must have a property having value equivalent to the value of the estate of the deceased. So this is quite true also, uh, pursuant to your section 35 of PAA as well as your administration bond issue if in the application uh, to apply for LA. And uh, she is afraid that she will not be able to secure any surety who is willing. Like I say, in reality, a little bit difficult. So, Juan Dima is now seeking for your advice. Advice on the following. Okay, A, who may apply for administration of the estate? Her late husband and the approximate uh, appropriate forum where the application could be made. Okay, uh, the question is quite challenging here huh? because uh, Juan Ayu, the second wife, said she actually has the priority. So we have to address whatever facts that is given in the question. So we will look at how, how I drafted uh, my answer. So Uma died in the state without a will. The total value of the estate involving, so I'll list down whatever the the uh, the assets owned by Uma, okay. Uh, I will calculate, and the total value is two point five four million. It exceeds the jurisdiction of land office. So again, I use the section three sub rule two seda two million and Amana Raya. Okay, so the estate is under the jurisdiction of high court. So I already answered the appropriate forum issues, okay? Reason being more than 2 million. And then second part of the question, who may apply? So because this is an interstate without a will, so they are applying for the grant of LA. So I use section 30 PAA. So Puan Ayu, Puan Tima and four children, as person interested in the estate can apply, not just uh, Puan Ayu as the second wife, okay? They can apply for grant of LA from High Court, Civil High Court. Since the deceased Uma was a Muslim, it is compulsory to obtain Sijil Farai from Sharia Court before applying LA in Civil High Court. Against, I use the case of Latifa against Rosmawati lah. 
And then the civil high court subsequently what they'll do is to refer to the Sijufa, right, in order to determine the distribution of estate based on Islamic law. Okay, as simple as that. Okay. So, uh, briefly state the procedure involved in the said application. So, what procedure is that? To apply grant of LA law in civil high court. So, this is again the repetition only lah, with the previous answer. Uh, but uh, simultaneously, this is the Sharia court thing you must uh, what we call remember. Lah. It's the same with the one. So, I copy and cut okay, from the previous answer. Okay. This one, I think you know already. No need for me to repeat. So, uh, the question C that I want to address uh, is regarding to the surety. So, what is the surety requirement? So, you must refer to your section 35. Okay. So, and then the requirement can be dispensed or not. I think I show you with one of the cost uh, paper that actually it can be dispensed. And on what basis? Uh, okay. It's already or inside your what we call section 35, you know. So, so I would say section 35 sub rule 2 provides that the administration bond must be guaranteed by two shorties who will have the assets within the jurisdiction, that means in Malaysia, lah, equivalent to the amount of the estate, okay? I use the case of Tan Gi Kui here, okay? Uh, that means to say now we see uh, the asset of Uma is 2.54 million. So we we'll have to find two sureties where they can prove to the court that they have several properties and those properties worth in combination uh, worth 2.54 million. Okay. Then only they can sign as guarantee. Okay. So surety is required to serve as security. The purpose uh, is for what? As a security for the value of the disease estate to protect the interests of beneficiaries and creditors and prevent abuse of process, uh, I mean the power by administrators during the distribution uh, process. You must always remember, uh, if the person died without a will, okay, that means if there's a will, uh, that means I appoint the executor whom I trust, you know. Now, there's no will. There's no executor. It is for the court to appoint an administrator or administratrix, uh, administratrix. Okay. So how did the court know the character? I mean, the background of the administrator. There must be some certain uh, process to safeguard the interests of the beneficiaries. Otherwise, a lot of issues will occur. So this is how the okay, administration bond. And there are actually uh, a few conditions where the administration bond is not required if the disease has no estate at all. So this is, I think, for fun only, la, they put. If no asset at all, so why apply, isn't it? No need to apply. La. And second thing, if the asset value is not exceeding 50000 okay? So 50000 is a cut-off point. If it is lower than that, so no need to have a surety eh? and uh, the grant is made to ARB okay and uh, uh, yeah this is pursuant to your section 35 sub rule 3 if you have time you have a look at this lah. okay the administrator is also the sole beneficiary of the estate that means the, uh, the disease has no one else as worries so the person in interest who apply for grant of LA is also the only beneficiary. That means the whole family probably could have uh, left only that particular person or die. Okay. So that one are uh, no need to execute because the interest of the beneficiaries will not be jeopardized. So the court is particularly concerned with the interest of min minor minority interest, you know. That means to say we have so many children, how to give? Uh, this is the, 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 the minority interest that the court is seeking to protect, uh, as well as the interest of the creditor. Okay? creditor. That's why sureties uh, come into place. So since Uma estate uh, did not satisfy the aforesaid situation because Uma left behind 2.5 million, it is advisable for Quantima to apply to register under Section 35, Rule 5 
where registrar has discretion. Okay, so how you apply is by notice of application no? with affidavit. I think I show you in the course paper just now, whereby administrators face difficulties in getting the shorties. You have to put in your affidavit, say that, okay, I have approached actually two uh, two richest friend of mine lah. I mean uh, I approach uh, Akau and I approach uh, Bala but they both refuse now I have no one left I do not know anybody that is rich okay does not have asset more than 2.5 million so the court will actually grant will actually grant okay so the dispensation uh, is normally granted uh, open such consent is being far and the beneficiaries and creditors probably you need to get their written consent. Okay, written consent because uh, remember in the application of uh, grant of LA, actually you need to list down the sets and also the liabilities. The liabilities that means you state who to whom the the the, the disease had owed. I mean, owed the money to during his lifetime. Okay, that is creditors. And then you will have list of worries, isn't it? That means the beneficiaries. Both my sign up. So agree that, okay, administrator, whom and whom, okay, administration bond uh, is dispensed. No need to have administration bond. But they'll have some risk lah, because there's no surety, you know. Uh, okay, if the administrator is not honest, then later on, there'll be disputable issues lah, okay? And uh, supplementary uh, paper of year 2020. I think we still have two questions to go. Yeah, still on time. Thank God. So, Balan had uh, just passed away caused by multiple organ failures. He had been in and out of hospital for at least four years prior to his demise. Uh, okay? He left a wife, Lona, and two children, Bobby and Lucy. So, Open his passing, one Mahadevan. Mahadevan is who? The elder brother of Balan eh, actually produced a will allegedly left by Balan, wherein he had duly appointed Mahadevan as the sole executor and the trustee of his will. The will was executed two months before his death. The will will the will only pertains to one piece of property in the Golden Triangle of Kuala Lumpur, jointly owned by Balan and Mahadevan. By that will, Balan had bequeathed his share in the property to Mahadevan absolutely. The will makes no mention of Balan other properties which comprise fixed property, deposit, rubber estate and seven lorries. Okay, so Lona, Bobby and Lucy now consulted you with regards to the uh, to the will executed by Balan. Bobby and Lucy inform you that the will was not signed but thumb print. Clear indication that something was not right. Lah. As Balan, a highly educated person, has always signed all legal documentations. They had also pointed that the witnesses to the will are not known to them. Balan had a small circle of friends. What were you your advice be to Lona, Bobby, and Lucy as to the validity of the will. Assuming the will is declared to be invalid, what steps could be taken by Lona, Bobby, and Lucy and the procedure involved to have the properties administered? Okay, so I look at the question one by one. Okay, uh, this is my standard. In advising Lona, Bobby, and Lucy, I make it very short. Lah. You see or not? Hearing after the family. Otherwise, uh, you keep on have to repeat Lona, Bobby, and Lucy. Lucy. It, 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 it sounds less professional. Okay. Uh, and you want to use short form, you use this uh, um this uh, paragraph. Reference is made to Vuzak, PAA, ROC. Okay, they can challenge the validity of the, the view on the grounds below. Straight away answer the question. Eh? Okay, like I say you seriously have no luxuries of time okay suspicious circumstances around the making of will okay so the will was made two months before the death of balan and the will had wholly gifted mahadevan okay uh, only mahadevan eh? okay uh, the will did not only con contain one thing you know 
that means the land that joined together with uh, Mahadevan. Uh, probably Mahadevan was the one that made the view because Mahadevan would not have appreciated or know what are the properties that belong to his late brother Balan, for example, fixed deposits, rubber estate, as well as seven lorries. Okay, so all these are uh, raise uh, the, 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 the index of suspicion. Uh, okay. So standard are also submitted. It's suspected that Balan uh, had not obtained, uh, I missed the word, not, uh, okay, obtained independent legal advice. So these are all suspicious uh, uh, circumstances. And it is for Mahadevan, uh, okay, not the family, not Luna, uh, Bobby and Lucy to prove the existence of suspicious circumstances, but rather Mahadevan's to best legal, of, legal burden of proof to dispel the suspicious uh, circumstances as for sake. So, to your deal here, eh? okay? And uh, possible fraud or not? Okay, possible fraud, okay. Uh, because the, how to say, eh? the, uh, there's one sentence here, okay. The will was not signed, but palm print. Okay, so I use the allegation. I did not conclude there is a fraud, but it certainly raised an and suspicion of fraud here. Okay, I use section five will act to say that by right the will should be signed at the bottom or the uh, uh, foot and there lah. Okay, but here in this case, um, the family has reasonable ground to suspect the view was a fraud. Why? Anna was used to be a highly educated person who always signed his legal documents. The will was thumb printed by Balan, even though the will might be valid if the thumb uh, it was thumb print. Okay. Uh, so even though the will thumb print is valid, but we do not know whether there is a fraud or not. So this is how I challenge based on index of suspicion. Because thumbprint itself is accepted, you know. Uh, it's accepted by the top to set the um, the view is valid. Okay. But I'm representing the family. I raise the issue of fraud. Okay. Because there's no way possible that Alan is resorted to thumbprint. Uh, because he can sign what, isn't it? Okay. So, but then the legal burden is on the family uh, to prove on balance of probability in the allegation of uh, fraud, okay? And uh, lack of testamentary uh, capacity as well. So standard, because Balan had suffered from multiple organ failure, okay? And had been in and out uh, from the hospital for four years. So probably you may need to raise the issue of lack of testamentary capacity. And as we have learned uh, that Section 3 will act, provide that the, when the will was made, Bala must have soundness of mind. But then the pressure is very low. Okay, He just need to know how much he, he own and who to give. That's it. Uh, so very difficult to establish testamentary incapacity based on the illness part, okay? Very important for you to uh, memorize that. And then it is actually for Mahadevan to prove the existence of testamentary capacity at the time of making the will, okay? And then I submit as usual, uh, how to say this, uh, even though Balan was terminally ill huh, at the time of making the will, it cannot be a vitiating factor. Lah. Very difficult, this one. Very difficult. Even you call a medical officer, also I think a little bit difficult. Okay? So, in uh, conclusion, siblings may challenge the will on the suspicious circumstances and possible of fraud. Okay? Possible of fraud. Okay? Because the facts is not sufficient for you to conclusively said, oh, there's memang a fraud. Lah. There's a deceit. Uh, there's a, what we call the intention to cheat and also the fraud on the uh, on the part of Mahadevan. Okay. And uh, question B. Okay. Assuming that the will is declared to be invalid, what steps can be taken 
uh, by Lona, Bobby, and Lucy, and a procedure involved to have the properties administered. Now, uh, the will is uh, is a hold by Mahadevan, isn't it? Okay, but since uh, the family has successfully challenged the validity of the will, okay, the once the will is declared to be invalid, and then it is deemed that there's no will, you know, Balan died in test the sea. So go back to your uh, previous uh, flow chart. When a person die in test the sea, so where does he go? You must apply LA, okay? LA. So the procedures must be taken by the siblings will be pursuant to, uh, again, repetition of apply LA, section 30, PAA, or S plus affidavit, and then appoint administrator, administrator angkat sumpah, and then administration bond, okay? Then issue LA, okay? And give distribution order. And the distribution of the estate shall be according to section six of distribution act 1958. So according to uh, your section six of uh, distribution act, so Bobby, Lucy as children, will get two-third of the estate. Luna, as the wife, will be, will be getting one-third of the estate. And Mahadevan, too bad, will get nothing because he's the brother. Okay? So this is how you submit. This is the proposed answer. Lah. Okay? Proposed answer. Okay. Uh, year 2021. 20, okay. Samantha and Bruce have been married for 25 years and have two children, they have decided to make mutual wills, each leaving his or her properties to their two children. Okay. With the aid of relevant authorities answering the following question, how would you define mutual wills? What in law is required to prove a mutual will? So this one, uh, I think if it comes out also, you have to do lah. Okay, in comparison with a uh, citation and caveat, so many rules are there. This one is just a uh, uh, substantive law, you know. Okay, so uh, you must point out, uh, relate back to Samantha and Bruce. Okay, uh, situation cannot just cite cite the whatever regurgitation that you have uh, memorized uh, without relate to the question, you know. So anyhow, you must insert the name of. Samantha and Bruce inside the, uh, the, the, the answer, okay? I'll submit as such. A mutual will are wills made by two parties, usually husband and wife, Samantha and Bruce, law, to protect the interests of each other and their children. Open the death of either Bruce or Samantha. The, these wills usually correspond and mirror one another to a certain degree. That means almost identical, almost identical, especially to the uh, disposition of the uh, assets, okay? The important assets, now, okay? So this is to say, the wills made jointly or separately that is agreed by both Samantha and Bruce beforehand to create an irrevocable interest for a certain beneficiaries, okay? So very important, uh, the word keyword here is irrevocable, okay? And wills made by Samantha and Bruce where the terms in both wills are substantially the same, okay? And confer reciprocal benefits to individual, okay? So in instance, the mutual will leaving his or her properties to the two children, probably, lah, okay? This is how uh, mutual will is being formed, okay? Okay, understand, uh, this one is quite simple, you know, two person spouse set up, uh, they sign the same will uh, together, okay, and it contains an irrevocable clause, say that this will cannot be changed, okay, because eventually one will die first, right, whether you like it or not, uh, probably Bruce will die first, and then subsequently, can Samantha change her will after the death, okay? You have to contest no? if you want to change the uh, will that he made when he was met, she was married with Bruce. Okay? Uh, the answer cannot. Nah. Uh, Samantha could be sued for breach of contract by her own children. So this is the reality. Lah. Once mutual will is set up, 
then you cannot change irrevocable. Okay, if not, you get sued by your own beneficiaries, usually children. Lah, okay, then the relationship turned very, very bad. Okay, so this is one uh, classic case law. I think you must memorize Hiroto Watanabe against Lo Yen Yen. Okay, so there are actually two important factors in law uh, to prove a mutual view. So uh, it must fulfill the general requirement of. Uh, the uh, setting of view lah. the the view maker must be a doubt sound mind must be signed two witnesses that one standard lah, okay uh, under section three to five of your view set and the mutual promise okay that means Samantha agreed Bruce also agreed by both parties to enter the view okay this is number one both parties must agree because the view is almost similar, identical, mirror image to each other. Okay. And second thing, you must always write out there is the issue of irrevocability. So once entered, cannot say after Bruce die, I want to change because I get married. Uh, you know, I get married with a new husband. I want to change the view. Lah. Can or not? Cannot. Uh, if you change, can. You subjected to lawsuit lah, by your own kids later on. Okay. And uh, okay, where is it? Uh? Ah, yeah, okay. So yeah, Abu died from cancer, leaving shares in public listed company, unit trust, and two cars under his name. The total value of the estate is estimated to be around 1.5 million. He left so 1.5 million, uh, okay. So you can see it is uh under small estate. Uh. He left behind a wife, Amy, and a pair of twins, age 22. Amy consults you and wishes to be advised as follows. So what is small estate? How to define that? And what steps Amy must take to obtain letter for representation for Abu estate? Okay, so this one, uh, letter of representation is not from High Court uh, because um, it is 1.5 million only. So you use the reference of uh, section 3, sub rule 2, SEDA, a small estate means an estate of the deceased person consisting partly or wholly. Okay, very important word there. Partly or wholly immovable property situated in any state and not exceeding 2 million in total value. Okay, so just write like that okay, to answer part A. And uh, part B would be the total value of the property left behind Abu Dai Interstate amounted to 1.5 million. It will satisfy the requirement of your section 3, sub rule 2, the small estates definition. So, like I said to you, um, this is a little bit unusual in your question uh, because all these things can be done online and the de direct dealing with uh, land office without the involvement of. Uh, uh, solicitor, you know. So actually, uh, you can just go online or submit the form, the petition uh, under this uh, section 8 of SEDA. The form A, you fill it up and then you give to the land office. Okay, subsequently, all the relevant uh, documents must be given. Like, for example, uh, the, the original, uh, the, 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 the death cert, lah, the death cert you must prepare. And then the list of, again, uh, standard, lah, the list of assets lah, and liabilities must be given. The IC of uh, who want to be appointed to be administrator must be given. And how many worries are there? Uh, I mean, Abu's main worries lah, must be given to the uh, land office. Okay, there's one section, SEDA opinion section in the land office to deal with this matter, okay? And subsequently, based on our flow chart just now, the assets of Abu shall be evaluated uh, by their own uh, valuer, okay? There's uh, one Jabatan Penilaian there, okay? It shall be valued. If it is minimum below 2 million, then subsequently, uh, uh, what we call the land office uh, officer, will deal with this matter. Lah, okay? They will provide a notice to attend the hearing. And as a standard, lah, whether it is uh, in high court or land office, they will actually check whether there's a grant before or not. Okay? With the uh, bagian kuasa mati lah of uh, the registrar. This is 
to make sure there's no duplicity, okay? Suddenly, you can get one from land office. Suddenly, there's uh, one grant of letter of LA from uh, the high court. So it becomes redundant. So sa, later becomes the question of law, you know, okay? So at the hearing, the interested parties, okay, usually the interested parties will be, uh, I mean, the family members, the spouse, the children, or the parents of the deceased shall attend. And then the land office will make distribution order, okay? Uh, this is a very rare question. Uh. I don't know why this year they come out. Eh? Because usually they ask you how to apply LA from high court. Okay. And uh, this question, I think Mr. Reno had discussed. But anyhow, I'll just give my answer as well. Lah. So Naidu's father passed away suddenly after a heart attack. And he's unsure of properties, be it real or personal, that the father may have as his father was a very secretive person. Hmm. So being too secretive is not so good as well. Eh? So Naidu has spoken to his father's close friends who informed him that the father's uh, assets are worth millions. Okay, you can see, uh, worth millions. Uh, and has a lot of properties as well as multiple banks account locally and overseas. So Naidu is at pains now. Uh, obtain particulars of the assets and properties. He is also unsure whether his father had executed any will, although he remembers that his father made mention of a will some 10 years ago. Naidu comes to you for advice on the types of, uh, I mean, letters of representation that he may apply. Advise Naidu. Okay. So I'll put it this way. Huh? Okay. To advise Naidu, Okay, um, in the event that Naidu could find the valid will of his late father, his life would be much easier because the story said he made, he probably would have made the will 10 years ago, only misplaced. If he could locate the valid will, uh, his life would be easier because all he need to do is to apply for, if he's the executor, uh, he can just apply for grant or probate by high court by virtue of Order 71, sub rule, uh, rule 5, sub rule 1. This is also by OS and affidavit. The affidavit must be compliant to uh, Order 71, Rule 5, sub rule 1, 2, 6, ROC. Okay. Honestly speaking, uh, for this uh, sub sub provision, my memories uh, will not last more than 48 hours. You know, uh, I mean, today I have passed the third day, I'll start forgetting the sub-provision. So I think it's a very uh, last-minute thing for you to really grasp the specific provision. Okay, Before you enter into the examination hall, you must read back. Lah. So subsequently, there shall be a hearing by Registrar of High Court okay? and the uh, Registrar or the Senior Assistant will inquire into all matters once satisfied. Okay? Grant of order for probate shall be uh, granted lah. That means the probate should be granted. Okay. Uh, in the in the event of uh, grant of probate, it shall be easier because executor was appointed by the will. So the court will respect the the so called the dis the disease uh, intention. You know, on how to dispose the property. Okay, as he like lah. So. There's no need administration or uh, bone or that. Okay, so and uh, the executor can extract the probate and distribute the assets accordingly. Okay, but he must act according to uh, good faith. Lah, okay, uh, for the purpose of practice, uh, actually, if you are doing will, uh, usually we'll name the beneficiary uh, and also the executor to be the same person. You know, it will be easier. Okay, it will be easier. So, however, if Naidu could not locate the will, he must try to discover all the assets inclusive of money in the bank's account, land searches, etc. Because the friends of his father said that, well, he's, he owns so much properties, isn't it? Usually, a will will list the assets because the will made by the father, the father surely know what, even though how secretive he is, he surely knows where his, his uh, bank account and also, also the land properties that he owns, isn't it? Uh, 
Uh, but here, there's no will. You have to discover yourself. Lah. If you want to become the administrator, you have to discover and you have to do land searches and write into the banks, all that lah, uh, to get. But, and it's not very easy. Uh, not very easy okay, to get those documentation. Okay? Uh, so what he can do, he may approach his late father's friend for more information, do searches in land office, banks, etc. Okay? It will take a lot of time. Lah. The facts suggested that the estate value of Naido's father worth millions of ringgit. Assuming it is more than 2 million, so section 3, sub rule 2 said that Naidu must apply for grant of uh, uh, administration by OS affidavit to high. Reason being, Seda cannot, uh, I mean, the small estate, um, um, the land office jurisdiction is no longer there lah, if the assets value is more than 2 million. So apply to high court. And then subsequently, also apply by way of all S plus affidavit, okay? So uh, subsequently, registrar will appoint Naidu as interested person. Eh? I mean, the person interested in the estate and will appoint him to be administrator. And then subsequently, Naidu need to get administration bond with two sureties. After the administration bond, either it is being realized by Naidu or Naidu make an application to dispense the administration bond. Okay, if the court allow the dispensation of administration bond, only the court will grant LA to Naidu. Okay, so not too hard lah. Not too hard lah. As you repeat more times, I think you can get. Uh, they love to ask LA lah. They love to ask LA caveat citation. These are the question that you must you must spot lah for your examination. Okay. So in the application for grant of representation, what is caveat? When can enter? Uh, this one pretty simple. I'll just write it down here. So a caveat is also known as a stop. Okay, to stop any other person, uh, to get grant of representation, be it a grant of probate or grant of uh, apa nama? Uh, LA. Okay. Mm. So to stop, to stop the grant lah. So when can apply? Uh, pursuant to section 33 PAA, so any person claiming interest uh, may at any time after the death of the deceased and before, the keyword is always before the representation has been granted, uh, enter a caveat. If the, uh, the LA is already being extracted out or that the probate is already being extracted out, I think it will be a little bit too late because people already start distributing the assets already. So a little bit for you to hold again, you know, okay? So before, eh? and the effect of the caveat is to stop all proceedings for the purpose of uh, obtaining grant of probate or LA in respect of the property of the disease, okay? To stop all the proceedings to, grab, to get the probate or LA. Okay, as simple as that. And I have said many times, caveat shall turn a non-contentious probate action into a contentious probate, uh, whereby the caveat team must issue a uh, warning and then subsequently need to serve to the caveater. Caveater need to enter appearance. Okay, once enter appearance, must show contrary interest, etc. Okay. And uh, the caveat uh, sees its effect when uh, expiry of six months, okay? Six months. This is pursuant to your Order 71, Rule 37, Sub Rule 5. Or is it being voluntarily uh, withdrawn by the caveat who enter the caveat? Okay, this is pursuant to your Order 71, Rule 37. Okay, this one, Sub Rule Brapa, I also forgot. Okay, I need to check and put in. And default appearance within uh, and did not appear within uh, eight days. Okay, that means the um, KVT, the KVT, the person that wanted to get the probate or LA, okay, um, give you a warning, uh, give the KVT a warning, but the KVT default, uh, never come, never respond. After eight days, automatically lapse. Okay, so the so-called the person that won the LA and probate can proceed, okay, to get the grant of representation. Okay, citation, I think, is a, uh, also a 
quite quite easy. This is usually in the event that there is a grant of representation already. The only thing is the executors or the administrators delay or decline to how to say to execute the 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 administration and disposition of the estate. So there are three types of citation uh, to accept or refuse grant of probate or administration. Okay, to take probate or to propound a will. Okay, uh, again once. Takirala citations, caveat have been entered, it will turn into a contentious uh, probate action. Okay, contentious probate action. Eh? Hmm. So, uh, okay, we have uh, a few questions. Later on, I'll post the video and also the slides. Uh. Please allow me sometimes to correct some spelling mistake. I think I'll post in the group tomorrow. It'll be easier for you. Administrator will find the sureties. Yes, the answer is yes. They will have to find the sureties themselves. Is their estate will be distributed and hukum farai under? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They stop hukum ka farai is um, uh, they are, this uh, farai is actually one law la, under the Al Quran. Okay, it's under Suna something like that la, If I'm not mistaken, so um, yeah, the estate will be dis distributed under seizure far right uh, allocation. But uh, during the application of seizure far right, what I heard from my friend would, would be the Sharia court will invite all the related, the blood time related when you're a family member to sit down together and then they will have a consensus also. Not necessarily to give to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the son or to the boy's side. Okay? Sometimes they can distribute equally also okay how to differentiate a mutual view and mirror view okay this one i have no knowledge i know only mutual view i i have not heard about this mirror view yet okay is there any other further question that you feel like asking me uh, yeah, once there's a challenge in the view, uh, it becomes contentious probate action. Yes, correct. If you challenge the validity of the view, yes. Assuming Robert is successful, will section 12 make the first view invalid? Yes, you are right. Uh, section 12 is operation of law, which said that a marriage will automatically revoke the first view. Okay, I hope... Uh, uh, is this understandable for you? Okay. The link to exam on uh, actually, yes, can. This is the official website, you know. Even we attend the conference or that, uh, they use this standard website. I hope it's not changed. Uh, okay. You can apply online nowadays, but you must cite the section 8 of your SEDA, okay, pursuant to your land office distribution. Okay. I will, I will upload the video, don't worry. So, uh, 